down um, the interior had uh, plywood up from the factory. Uh, I don't know if it was a half inch, probably. And um, stripped that all down, put insulation up, and then um, I actually went to Lowe's and bought this is like a fiberglass board. Um, comes in, I think, eight, uh, six by eight sheets, or four, I'm sorry, four by four by eight, four by eight sheets probably. Um, put those up. I bought this channel stuff for the seams. Same thing at Lowe's. Um, and I bought uh, this kind of beadboard looking um, press board or whatever wood. Um, almost like a plywood, I guess, but press board. Then at Lowe's came in white. I just painted it um, with some paint I had at the house. Um, let's see, some of the details I did. Uh, ceiling's not done yet, but I will be covering that. Um, some of the details I've got from the sliding door here. It's not on a track or anything. It's just in between the floor and, and some blocks of wood, as you can see up there. I've got a um, deep cycled 12 volt battery, an inverter in case I need it. I've got an input coming from uh, outside the trailer uh, so that I can plug into my generator and just a battery tender hooked up so that way whenever the generator is running it's kind of charging my my deep cycle or just floating it. Um, then put in all the home style outlets throughout. They're on breakers. Um, so I've got one up the front, one right on the nose that I keep on a uh, power strip. So my battery case or my charging cases and whatnot, I plug in there and that, that way it's on a little bit of an extra protection with a surge protector. Um, more outlets. Got one here, got one towards the back, so that way if you have anything out back you want to power lights or whatever. And then one up front by the door. Um, I've got uh, those all running off of obviously the directly off the generator unless I plug in the inverter and then they'll run off the uh, deep cycle battery. But I don't plan on doing that too often unless it's something really small that I need to run. For lighting, I went to super bright LEDs and I picked up uh, dot com and I picked up a couple of these pretty cool looking little strips I think I might get a couple more um, once I finish the ceiling of the trailer but these are kind of nice because you can turn them on and off individually and they also rotate so you can direct the angle once even once they're mounted so it doesn't matter if you mount them to the wall like I did or the ceiling um, you can angle them however you want so I've got one on each side I think those are like a 16 or 18 inch long version and then on the back I've got something pretty cool same same website um it's a floodlight but the bracket that it comes with actually allows it to swivel so i've normally got it aiming kind of down ish into the trailer so it kind of lights up the rest of the trailer and it's actually very very bright it does light up the end of the trailer no problem and i can swing it down so it's actually aiming outside of the trailer so at night if you're kind of sitting under the easy up out back or whatever you've got some light so that, that's a pretty cool idea um then let's see oh those, so those all work off of this switch here by the door again just 12 volt and obviously it's daytime now so they're not going to look super bright but they are pretty darn bright at night um then in the front just a couple of small uh leds over kind of the the countertop work area so that i'm not using a ton of juice so at nighttime if i want it's on a separate switch i can just hit those and have a little bit of light up front just to um kind of dink, dink around up here on the on the countertop um so that's on its own little circuit speaking of the countertop something i picked up at um grossman's bargain outlet it's um just a piece of, of countertop that they had i cut it to fit the the angle of the vinos kind of wedged it in there and then i built a frame around it underneath so it actually will support a lot of weight because i've got a two by four frame underneath it's just um you know it's just your normal press board with a laminate top nothing nothing fancy but it looks pretty cool um I did start putting up some uh, some borders and some some trim pieces, and like I said, I did paint the the bead board. I've still got some corner you know pieces to do and stuff like that, but the majority of the trailer is done, so I figured I'd let you check it out. Um, fire extinguisher for just in case. Um, the uh, garbage can, kind of a must. You, know, you got to take everything with you when you're at the field. Can't leave anything behind here. So um, any broken parts come back home with me. Um, this thing kind of was mounted in the trailer and I just reused it. I think I'm using it for what its intended purpose. It's just to kind of hide the registration and uh, inspection or whatnot for the trailer and uh, keep that handy. This I got off of Amazon. It's a three-in-one. Obviously, you can see it's telling me the voltage right now of the... Um, 
of the battery that's on board, but I also um, have kind of the USB, either a 5 volt 1 amp or 5 volt 2.1 amp um, outlets, so I can charge cell phones and laptops and stuff like that from that off the 12 volt battery, and that's just the cigarette lighter style, kind of same thing, cell phones and, and whatnot, any accessories off of that. Um, the flooring came from Grossman's as well. Um, again, just a plywood floor was underneath, so I bought um, almost the cheapest kind of floating floor, the interlocking, um, kind of similar to Pergo, but, uh, you know, the cheap brand. Um, and it actually worked out really well. I think it's six inch wide. I wouldn't go with anything narrower because it's just a pain to put them all in. This is really, really nice. It worked out really well. It's pretty thick, so it's pretty pretty sturdy it's not going anywhere and um, screws up the front on every board just for um, to keep it secure and then I've got finishing nails uh, a couple places throughout just to keep it fastened down and then all the way to the back and I didn't do any fancy style or anything like that just enough to get it down and then all the way in the back I've got screws running the, the width of the trailer that that way it keeps the back end of uh, the boards all down uh, all throughout the trailer, I'm noticing now I've got my, my D-rings kind of just locking points to tie down stuff. Um, kind of all the way along the walls, both both sides, and it works out really well. As you can see, I've got a, a folding table mounted to the wall right now. And then towards the ceiling, again, I've got these hooks all throughout. So those are nice because I throw my coat and some extra tie-downs. I've got a spot there where I kind of hang a, a chair, so that one always stays in the trailer, so I know I've always got somewhere to sit. Um, my easy up, my generator. Um, this is kind of cool. I found this little tray at, um, I think, the Home Depot. I had that had that, and I bought it because it fits my two gallons of fuel perfect perfectly. So I got I drilled a hole on either side and threw a tie down on it to keep them in place. And it's actually screwed to the floor so that way I don't have fuel sliding around the trailer when I'm transporting it. Um, my, this is just a small toolbox I keep bringing up stuff and it's not mounted anywhere I just bring it with me to the to the field and in between field and the home kind of shop so I've always got the tools I need that's a cheap from um, Big Lots I think just you know your standard plastic tub I use these around the house so I knew it would work out pretty good for me and then all I did was throw a couple of screws um, it's screwed to the wall obviously so it's not going anywhere and I threw a couple of screws so that um, you can kind of keep all the drawers closed because they don't lock. Um, you can get one that locks, but um, I was cheap with this, and I like it because it's clear on the front. You can see exactly what's in there. And then I think from Big Lots also, just some real cheap plastic tubs that I started using and marking them with the helicopters that I have and filling them with parts so that way I've got them at the field and I can do any rebuilding I can um, in a pinch, but most of my stuff stays home. This cabinet was pretty cool. It was on um, clearance at Lowe's and um, you put it together there's really no hardware it all just kind of snaps together it's pretty easy again screwed to the wall so it's not going to go anywhere um, once you open the doors though it comes with two shelves so you actually have three levels of storage so I just have like my transmitter case and my starter that's a little briefcase I use to put all my lipos in and then usually I have my chargers down in the bottom shelf too um, but it keeps that all nice and neat again from flopping around the trailer uh, I built this workbench out of just a piece of plywood I had and then I actually left over strips of the flooring. So I glued that and screwed it down just so that it's super steady. And then I didn't want to have feet hanging down. I saw a lot of people that had, you know, feet going down the floor, but I wanted this to be easily um, collapsible and get out of the way in case I need the trailer to bring stuff home. So I uh, went to, I looked around like crazy. I ended up finding them at Home Depot, believe it or not. These angle brackets, but they actually collapse so if I push this pin it'll actually collapse down and this will fold right up into the wall and then I've got one on either end and in the middle I just put a standard like door hinge just for a little added um, rigidity in the center down the center but you can see it's just plywood nothing fancy and but what's cool is there's no there's no legs to it so you're not in, they're not in the way of anything and I can put put the stuff underneath there and whatever whatever I want extra storage works out great I've actually used it a few times working on the helis um, some of my hellies are in the trailer right now because I am out here playing in the fly um, if the wind dies down a little bit. But uh, my 570, uh, I've got a Mastro 700 Nitro if you want to look at it as either being fortunate or unfortunate to own one. But um, I, it actually flies really, really nice. It's been giving me 
so many little problems but as I shake them out it just flies really nice so it's big and it's got a lot of presence in the air um, really cool helicopter actually so I'm pretty glad I picked one up and I I've got a bunch of spares for it so once they're gone then I'll probably jump into something different for a 700 size nitro but for now that one's that one's here to stay for a little bit the e7 se um, one of my newer purchases, believe it or not, when they came out with the 766, I did throw a post on one of the forums asking if anybody had an airframe, because I had all the um, electronics and stuff um, for it. So I bought the airframe and the motor from a gentleman, super, super nice guy. The airframe was absolutely perfect. I could tell he, he takes a lot of time in his builds and whatnot, and that is a fantastic flying 700 class. If you've never flown a Synergy, phew, do it because they're they're a nice helicopter not to die digress from the uh, trailer build but they are a super nice helicopter i've got an n5c also that that's just a pleasure to fly um but the reason i'm showing you those is because i came up with this little idea for kind of a heli rack in the back so um i took just a wire shelf from you know home depot lowe's whatever the fasteners that you can buy for it if you're actually going to hang this thing in a closet and um, a couple metal brackets I had because they're just um, for safety's sake and for strength's sake. And um, bolted it right to the wall. And I'm a big fan of these Velcro straps. I was going to go with um, the plastic uh, quick mounts, um, you know, that are available. But um, I, I'm a real big fan of these plastic straps. You can cut them to any length you need. Uh, in fact, I've got a roll of it sitting here. You can buy it. I probably bought it at Walmart or something. But it's, it's actually a heavy-duty one. When you go to peel it apart, it is really, really grippy but you can cut it to any length you need it's not sticky um you know it just sticks to itself there's no adhesive backing and the uh, as long as you have normal skid pipes they they fit right into the bottom of the the shelf when it's mounted on its side like that and a couple of straps wherever you want them and it's going to hold it pretty steady I've, i haven't had a problem yet with transporting them so um i'm actually real happy with the way it came out i can put a couple more hellies if i really wanted to fit them in there tight but I don't bring everything to the field. The only problem with doing it that way is that my goblin still rides up in the car with me because of the skids. Those skids do not fit neatly within that frame. If you wanted to cram it, you could, but um, I get nervous. They're carbon fiber, and I just it makes me a little nervous, so I haven't mounted it to the wall. I'll hang it from there throughout the day if I need to get it out of the way, but um, it rides up in the car with me. Uh, another couple of hooks over here, and actually these were kind of a happy accident. I had them all through the trailer anyway, but what's really nice about having some hooks right where the helis hang is if you have the canopies off, you can hang the canopies from the hooks too. I've found that that's um, kind of good to have there, because when I'm working on the bench, take the canopy off, throw it on the hook, and I'm working on the heli on the bench. I found this metal pegboard with a kit of um, hooks and everything else. I think that was at Home Depot as well. Um, just have some of the random tools there that I use and, and um, you know, Allen uh, drivers and, and stuff like that. A lot of the stuff is in that little orange toolbox I showed you, but um, some stuff's up here. And a magnetic tray. You can get these at Harbor Freight for like a couple bucks. Sometimes they send you coupons. I think I got this one for free. I think I have a larger one at home that I also got for free. Um, sometimes they send you the coupons like free with purchase or whatever. And it's great for steel screws and stuff when you're taking things apart at the field. Don't drop them. You can throw them in this tray. They're magnetic and, and they're going to stay put. So I'm a big fan of those when I'm working on cars and, and bikes as well. But um, works out great for the helis. Um, my Death Star, <laughs> Star Wars Death Star clock. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, oh, and uh, just a couple rails that I put in for those, you know, metal brackets that you can put shelves on and stuff. Um, I threw them in there because I, was, I had some shelves in here. Now I don't really need them. Um, because I bought this plastic case that I showed you, or cabinet that I showed you. But I, I do plan on using that because what I'm going to do is set my charging case on it. And my, my charging case has the um, kind of screw hole underneath to mount to a tripod. But what I'm going to do is build a little bracket off of the, the wall, the brackets on the walls there, and mount my charge case to it so it can sit out of the way instead of sitting on the countertop like it is now. And um, for anybody who's looking at the charge case and is interested, I did build that myself, and I'll probably do another video on um, how that build went and what I used and stuff like that because I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. Ecstatic, in fact, is pretty nice. Um, one more look around here. I think that's just going to about do it. I think I'm going to go charge some packs and get some flying in. All right, guys, hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, look forward to hearing any of your thoughts and feedback. Thanks.